Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here. And today I thought I would go ahead and explain for people because people are asking in the comments what my current training split looks like, how I get away with it, and why you probably shouldn't do it. So, uh, for those who know, they already know, but a lot of people don't seem to understand because they don't watch all of the vlogs. Uh, yes, I train seven days a week. I max out seven days a week and I do high volume <laughs> accessory work seven days a week. Uh, that's pretty much what I do. Now, a lot of people would say, well, what's that look like? Well, it's an upper lower and it generally goes every other day some sort of bench. And then I have a squat and a deadlift day alternating. So if it were set up in a four-day rotation instead of a seven, uh, it would be like two pressing days every week, a squat day and a bench day. But the accessory work is very, very similar for the squat and the deadlift. And so what I do, I go through and I work on all my weak points. So pretty much I hit close to my maximum recoverable volume on every single muscle which is very, very high for me at this point because I have built a perfect lifestyle around this. I basically live like a, a professional athlete would at this point. Because of my two online businesses, I have the luxury to do that. I work from home. I can make my own schedule. Um, I'm financially very secure at this point. I'm not actually worried about a lot of the concerns that other people have. I don't have to do stuff I don't want to do. I don't have to interact with people I don't want to interact with. And I have complete control of my lifestyle. That affords me a recovery and a maximum effective volume that most people simply do not have the luxury to have. That's the reason I just keep getting stronger. Because people are noticing like you're just continuing to slowly get stronger week after week. Like yeah, and that's pretty much, that's why. Uh, I ran West Side most of the year. And then I went over to doing this. So I ran Conjugate Method which people slang call Westside. It's not actually true West Side because I didn't do it at West Side Barbell. So we'll get the terms correct because I know Louis Simmons gets upset at that and I actually respect the guy a lot. But I run the, ran the conjugate method. Then I basically go on to just doing their max effort approach. All right? I run max effort seven days a week instead of two. So what is the concept behind it? Well, I've realized looking at things, I like maxing out. And I realized, having done Bulgarian before, uh, we get into overuse issues, everything else, if we don't rotate lifts. That's how Westside gets away with it. Rotating lifts all the time, that way we avoid overuse issues. That means you can max out a lot more often. But what I found is that we can do it way more frequently than they recommend. Now, I'm also not a 500-pound bencher or a 900-pound squatter, so it probably is a bit different. Uh, and I've also looked at all the stuff that you have as far as the volume those guys do, which they actually, their programs itself and they train is very, very, very high volume. And a lot of people seem to have lost sight of that because they just look at their basic MEDE template and think that's all they do. They don't realize they're coming in and sometimes doing 20 sets of accessory work after. But I've run with that. I've looked at what guys like Jamie Lewis and a lot of these guys have pushed and promoted a chaos and pain. Uh, what guys like Boogs have done, uh, my own understanding of maximum recoverable volume, the data on overtraining, and I've realized that if your lifestyle is good, you can probably train three times as much as what most people would ever recommend and be fine. And I built my lifestyle around that. That's the reason I'm going to continue to make gains. I've made tremendous strength gains this year. Next year, we're going to see the same thing, right? Coming up, I don't, I don't predict that changing, but the whole idea is maxing out every day, rotating lifts. And avoiding psychological attachments. Some people will say, well, you don't do your exact classic ones very often. No, I don't. Because there's an emotional attachment to it. And if we are going to do this stuff with zero stress, because stress management's everything, avoid those exercises. There's an actual psychological reason for that. Now, why do I max as often as I do? Is it necessary? No. Does it have a training effect? Yes, especially if you're doing supplemental work behind it. I do it for psychological reasons. I don't like doing volume. I don't like doing reps. I don't like doing 12 rep sets of tricep extensions. Okay, I don't enjoy that. I enjoy lifting heavy. If I lift heavy, I reward myself on the front end and remind myself why I need to do the other stuff. Okay, it's, it's, it's my carrot on a stick. 
it's basically the stuff that I don't want to do that I know I need to do to get stronger and bigger, right? That in order for my maxes to go up, I have to do it. So if I max first, it reminds me, number one, why I do the other stuff. Number two, I get to do the thing I enjoy first. Number three, it's since I maxed out, I have to do the other stuff now. Okay, it's, it has to be done so that that can improve. It, it is the way that I program myself psychologically to do the things that I don't necessarily enjoy. All right? Do the things I don't necessarily enjoy. I know I need to do them. But the training itself, yeah, I mean, for those who watch it, it's 15 to 25 sets of volume work. A lot of it taken to failure. A lot of it taken to failure. A lot of it limits. That's meaning if I have to rest pause the last couple of reps to finish a set, we basically reached failure. A lot of 10s. It's mostly 10s. I do 1s and 10s. Then some smaller exercises I do higher. Now, evenings... I do a lot of band curls and stuff. Like right now, every day I do really, really high rep band curls to failure. To again, I need the bicep development. Number two, to build my tendons to avoid risking tearing a bicep. All right, valuable tool. Do a lot of extra grip training. People notice at this time, my training is very heavily geared towards grip and forearm. I'm doing a ton of axle bar work, right? Fat bar work. Tons of it. Probably close to 50% of my training is done with an axle bar. I need the, uh, the forearm and grip development. I do a lot of pinch work, a lot of crush grip work. Uh, we do that, the high rep stuff off camera for the curls. Uh, people say high rep, how many is it? I don't know, 30, 50, 60, whatever. I don't count it. At a certain point, you, it's hard to count reps past 25 or 30. I just go until my arm stops. Okay. When I can't do another curl and it jerks down and I can't complete a rep, against the bands, that's that's how many I did. And I use varying bands. If it is in the 50-ish range, just ballpark, because the same band, it could be you might fail on 35 or 60 with the same band tension. You know, just failure is failure. Um, but that's what my training looks like. And people will say, how do you get away with that? Well, my lifestyle's perfect. I don't have a single friend or family member who annoys me that I talk to. Anybody who I find annoying I block them on my phone. My, my, by the way, my, my loved ones have figured this out already and they realize that because I've told all of them. Uh, I'm leading a zero stress lifestyle. That means I don't put up with your crap. If you annoy me, that's it. You're gone. You stress me out, you're gone. I don't like people who are late, by the way. That's like, that's my biggest pet peeve in life. That's me as a person. People who are five minutes late, to things, 15 minutes late to things, those those people can't be in my life. If I owned a business with employees, you'd probably be fired the first time you did that without a call-in. Uh, I don't like late people. That annoys me. So those people can't be my friends. This is what it is. They, they, they can stay on Facebook. They know I'm not going to hang out with them. Um, that's... <laughs> That's just the way it is. Um, so I don't put up with anything that annoys me. That's why when people notice the trolls, you just, you just ban trolls. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody who annoys or stresses me, they're gone out of my life. I lead a zero stress life. I sleep at least nine hours a night. Some nights it's 10. Uh, I'm in bed at like 6 p.m. most nights. Okay. That's why you guys see me up early doing stuff. And, I mean, I get up in the middle of the night and check stuff and check messages. I use melatonin to make sure I knock out. I sleep. Uh, I eat a ton of food. I don't have any processed food in my house. Zero. Unless I am chilling and deloading in vacation time, I don't eat any refined foods of any type. Nothing. People say, well, how refined is refined? It's like, what do I have in my house? I have whole milk. I have meat. I have nuts, I have bags of cashews, pecans, stuff like that in my deep freezers because I have two deep freezers um, full of meat. I usually keep like 50 pounds of meat or so on hand, 30 to 50 pounds at any time. I usually have 10 gallons of milk in the fridge of whole milk. Um, bags of like two pound bags of frozen nuts I buy bulk. I have frozen fruit because I don't always like to keep fresh fruit, it goes bad quick. Um, and I may not want to eat all of it in one day. I don't need to, like to eat tons of fruit. 
Uh, tons, I, but I have frozen fruit. They're usually blueberries, cherries, other mixed berries, right? Raspberries. But I do a lot of blueberries and vegetables. Okay, that's it. That's the only five foods I eat. That's what I mean by unprocessed. Those are all single ingredient foods. So if I want to make a snack, a treat, I can take frozen pecans, frozen blueberries, drop them in a cup and pour whole milk on it and mix it up. That's a, that's a treat, all right? I drink my gallon of milk every day. I want a steak, I take a steak out and cook a steak. And steam some broccoli to go on the side with it. So I eat around 4,500 calories a day because my training facilitates that much at this point. Uh, and no, I'm not bulking. I eat nothing but whole foods. I don't eat anything that's refined. So if people say, oh, you don't drink whey protein, you don't do it. No, I don't have refined foods in my house. I don't have any grains. I don't have any sugar. I don't have oils. I don't have butter. Okay, those are refined foods. I don't eat any of that. Uh, when I deload, people have probably figured this out. There's a certain frequency in which people have noticed that I deload. My deload... I don't walk into a weight room, okay? I shut my weight room down. I shut everything down, lock everything down, and I vacation. When I am deloading, I don't film YouTube videos because this is part of my weight training. This is, carries its own stress. This is one of my two jobs. I don't have to. I have 50 videos ahead at any given time as far as informative videos. I don't have to film during deloads. Uh, I don't film, I don't touch a weight. I do band work and body weight exercises, right? I, I can use bands, I can do band stuff. I can do a few step ups. So I don't do anything other than body weight movements or bands during deloads. People are like, why don't you film that? Because I don't have a camera either. I don't film during deloads, I don't do anything for YouTube other than press the button to make videos live and maybe get answer a few questions. Uh, I don't Skype with clients during deloads. I answer client emergency questions through messenger or email. I don't Skype with clients during deloads. That is my away from training time. That's when I recover. Okay, my deloads are about four or five days at a time. Uh, and people have kind of noticed that I don't upload training footage, but I shut everything down. So the perfect lifestyle, perfect stress management, okay? I am on my own schedule. I don't answer to anyone else. I don't have anything stressful or anyone stressful in my life. Anyone who is even remotely annoying to me, they can't be in my life. They're done. They're out. And because I technically work for myself with clients and then a contractor with Google, um, I don't have to interact with people I don't like. That removes stress. I have unlimited rest time, unlimited sleep time, unlimited food, zero processed food. And when I say this, I do mean that literally, guys. Like, so when other people talk about that they, well, they eat this and it's going, like, that's junk food, man. You're talking about white rice. Eat crap like that. But that is how I'm recovering from it. Because I have a perfect diet as far as, again, those are your five perfect foods, right? Dairy, meat, vegetables, nuts, fruit. Okay. That's beautiful. That's perfect. That's everything you could possibly need to be a perfect athlete in those five food groups. Uh, unlimited sleep, unlimited soft tissue. That's the other thing. I, I do a lot, spend a lot of time with an electric massager, a lot of time foam rolling, uh, a lot of times just doing all that active recovery and just soft tissue work. That is done every day single day. I probably spend 30 minutes a day doing that stuff. I do that stuff between sets. A lot of times when I'm between sets training, I'm over here putting a massager in my delts in between those sets of floor press and overhead press or in, on my triceps, uh, maybe on my hamstrings, on my quads, between a lot of those lifts you see me doing. Okay, So that stuff's done every single day so that I can recover from all of it. And when I deload, I deload. I walk away from all of it. That's how I get away with doing this seven days a week. And it's working. It's working. And everyone who follows, even there are people who've been coming in and who are saying, I don't even like you, but your gains are definitely there. You are gaining strength just consistently. But that is how I do it. It's a perfect lifestyle. 
perfect rest, nutrition, stress management recovery. You shouldn't do that. At most, most of you out there with, with normal careers, you're going to be able to do that four days a week. If you wanted to do what I do, four days a week. Maybe two pressing days, a squat day, a deadlift day, and accessories. You shouldn't do the seven. Uh, but I find that it works. I find that it does work um, as long as you can recover from it. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.